What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So this week we're going to talk about an extension that allows you to create copies of objects along paths and some of the things that we can use in order to uh, use this extension effectively. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so in this video I wanted to talk about the extension Path Copy. So Path Copy is an extension that's been around for a long time and uh, you can use it to copy objects along different paths inside of SketchUp. And so you can find path copy by going into the extension warehouse and just searching for path copy. So we can just do path copy. It's going to show up right here and it's from the smustered team. So it's from the smustered team right here. Note that this does not note that it's compatible with version 2019 or 2020. Um, it is working fine on my version 2020, um, but they haven't updated it to note that it's compatible. So just be aware of that. I don't think it's a huge deal, but as with everything, it's not compatible. Um, I usually try it to make sure it works, but do whatever you feel good about. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've installed this extension. Now let's talk a little bit about what it does. I've got a number of different light poles that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. These are from a collection that Daniel Tall had uploaded to the warehouse. And so I figured we'd talk a little bit about how to copy objects along paths using this extension. So first things first, let's look at the easiest way to do this, right? Let's say you had a straight path like this one, it's just a single edge, something like this. And let's say you wanted to place one of these lights along that path. Well, in this situation, all you have to do, select your path, go to extensions, path copy, and then click on the group or component that you want to copy along the path. So notice how this is placing copies of this at a certain spacing. And notice how down in the lower right hand corner there's a little box that says distance between. If you were to type in a different value like 15 feet and hit the enter key, you can see how this spacing would change. If you typed in 30 feet and hit the enter key, this would change again. So notice how I haven't clicked anywhere else um, or, turn the app, or turn the extension off. Um, this is still live. So so as long as this is live and you haven't clicked somewhere else, you should be able to place these. And so the first thing I want to talk about is if you look at these, they're facing the wrong direction, right? I mean, I, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. but. Um, in this situation, these are facing along this path this way. I would want them to be turned to face the other way. Well, one thing that you usually want to do when you're using this extension is you want to use components. So if you look at this, this is a component and this has created different instances of that component in my model. Well, now if I was to double click on one of these and edit that, so if I was to do a control A, take all of these and rotate them, 90 degrees. Notice how because these are components, when I change one of them, they all change, right? So that means because these are components, these are different instances of the components, I only have to change one of these in order to get all of them to change. So make sure you're using components if these are all going to need to face the same direction or something like that. Alternatively, let's pick one of the other lights in here. So let's draw another line and let's pick, we'll go with this light right here and I'll move it over here just so we can look at it. So in addition to being able to rotate these after you've placed them, you can also adjust the object axis in order to adjust their orientation. And so let's say I wanted these to face the other direction when I place them. Well, all I would need to do is just come in here and let's say we wanted them to face the other way. You could come in here and adjust the object axis so that the green axis is facing this direction and the red axis is facing the other direction. So you can see I'm just placing a new object axis in here. Now if I click off of here, it's going to ask me if I want to update the component axes. I'm going to say yes. Well now, if I was to place this along this curve, you can see how they're going to face the other direction because this is aligning the red direction with my path. So by knowing that, you know that you can change your object axis in order to adjust the direction these are going to face when you place them. So now let's talk a little bit about multiple lines, right? Because right now, if we wanted to copy these along a path like this, if we were to select both of these and let's pick a new light, let's go with this light right here. So let's say we wanted this light to go along this path, but this path now has two edges, right? Well, if I was to select both of these and then activate path copy, 
click on this object, it's only going to place them along one of these, not both, right? And the reason for that is because path copy can only place objects along single paths or single curves, right? So if there's multiple different edges in here, it can only place objects along one of them. But a workaround for that is you can download the extension Weld. And so if you go to the, uh, the extension warehouse, Weld probably is going to show up on the first page, but you can also type in Weld and install that. What that's going to do is that's going to allow you to take these two edges, see how this says two edges, and it's going to allow you to go into your extensions, click on the button Weld, now, instead of this being two edges, this now treats this like a single curve, right? So like a single line with two segments in it. So now, if I was to run path copy, so window, extensions, or extensions, path copy, click on the object, you can see how this is now being placed along this entire path, right? So you can use this to place objects along complex paths. And notice how all the functionality still works. You can still type in different values, other things like that as well. So in addition, let's say that we wanted to create a curve like this one, right? So we'd have the same issue. Let's grab a new light pole. So you'd have the same issue here, right? So if you were to select this, run path copy, click on this object, these would only go along one part of the curve. So we just need to select them all, go to extensions, weld, that'll allow us to weld this into a single curve, and then we can use path copy to place this along this entire curving curve. And so practically speaking, let's talk about an example where let's say that we had a road that curves, right? So let's say we were to go to the 3D warehouse and just type in curving road. And let's select this object right here, this two plus one HOV with off ramp. And let's bring this in, right? So we're gonna download this, click on yes, and we'll place this right here. Let's go ahead and pick one of our bigger lights. So maybe, I think in this case, we'll go back to this guy. So I'm gonna create a copy and bring that over here. So now what we have is we have a set of grouped geometry that we wanna place this on, right? So this actually adds a little bit of complexity to what we're trying to do here. So for example, if I was to double click in here, there's two things we need to pay attention to. Let's say we want these lights to go along the side right here, right? The first thing we need to pay attention to is there's multiple edges in here, right? So we need to weld them together into a single curve that way we have a full path, but then we also need to focus on the fact that our road is grouped and our geometry is outside of the group. But let's solve the welding problem first. So we'll just select all of these, go to extensions, weld. That's gonna weld this into a single curve. And so we really have two options in here. The first one gets a little bit weird. Um, I don't know why it acts this way. You could select this, click on path copy, and then right click and close your component, and then click on this light. So that'll work. And notice how this does take this light and copy it along this path, right? However, it doesn't copy them along the path over here. So you could take all of these and move them if you wanted to. My recommendation instead is wherever your path is, so if it's inside of this group, right? Your path is in the group, the object is outside of the group. I would just do a control X to cut this, double click into my group, and then just do an edit, paste in place so that this object is inside of the group that you're trying to copy along the path. It's just gonna be easier. You could try to do it the other way, but it's really not worth it, I don't think. It just gets kind of complicated. But now, I've welded this together. Can you use path copy? I can click right here, and I can add these lights along this path. I can adjust the distance by typing in a value of maybe like 30 feet, or maybe 50 feet. 
and hitting the enter key right here. But you can see how it's really easy for me to add objects along these more complex paths using this method. So that's kind of an overview of some of the issues I commonly run into with this extension. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're having any struggles with this extension, if you've used it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.